Hi everyone. Yeah. Just a minute. Okay. Hi. Good evening, everyone. So let us start with this uh, session. So welcome to all. Welcome. I welcome you all to one academy. So this is a class on uh, salivary gland tumor. But before that, do spare some time. Enroll yourself for the combat exam, which is being held on 10th of October, 11 a.m. Please don't miss this exam. This is really very important. And yes, if you're planning planning to buy an academy subscription, this is the right time. Today is the last day before you have the price high. So from 1st of October, uh, not the last day, we have two days left. But yes, from 1st of, of October, you will definitely have the hike in the class price. So please uh, try to utilize all these special class features. If you have not enrolled yourself in an academy, you can just download the app and use the code Dr. Dixit and get access to the free special classes. We have a lot of interesting features. An academy has a, has the most you can say wide uh, question bank 25,000 plus questions and they are very having a very lot of authentic answers. We have a lot of batches started mission INICT. I am covering surgery in that. So do join an academy before the price hikes. So let us start with this class. This is a very important session on salivary gland tumors. So let us have a classical approach on the salivary gland tumors. Now when we talk about salivary gland tumors, what is the first thing that comes in our mind? Yeah. When we talk about salivary gland tumors, what is the first thing? We always think about the parotid and parotid pleomorphic adenoma. Yeah. So let us talk in nutshell about the salivary gland tumors. Now the first thing that we all should be knowing is that the most common salivary gland tumor, the most common salivary gland tumor overall and the most common salivary gland tumor in the benign category. So the answer for both of them is pleomorphic adenoma. It is pleomorphic adenoma. So answer for both of them is pleomorphic adenoma. The next very important thing is the most common, the most common malignancy if you talk about the most common malignancy of the salivary gland. Answer is mucoepidermoid mucoepidermoid tumors. So mucoepidermoid cancer is the most common malignancy. When we talk about salivary gland tumors in kids, salivary gland tumors, very good, very good, Pujari. Yeah. So when we talk about salivary gland tumor in infants, first of all, in infants, it is not seen. So it is seldom seen. Less than 1% incidence is there. But yes, if you talk about what is the most common, come on, anyone from audience, tell me what is the most common salivary gland tumor in infants? Answer is it is hemangioma. Hemangioma liver. Hemangioma. Sorry, I'm sorry. Hemangioma liver. You have to understand that most common site for hemangioma is the liver, but hemangioma of you can say salivary gland is also seen in kids. So hemangioma greater than pleomorphic adenoma. Now, if the question is asked, most common solid, most common solid malignancy, this is the answer, pleomorphic adenoma. So, if the question is most common solid tumor, solid tumor of salivary glands, the answer will be pleomorphic adenoma, pleomorphic adenoma. Let us try to understand other very important things. Most common malignancy in kids, again, this is mucoepidermoid. Now let us talk about pleomorphic adenoma, pleomorphic adenoma. When we talk about pleomorphic adenoma, let us talk about pleomorphic adenoma. Why it is known as pleomorphic? The answer is the population of cells that is present inside this tumor is variable, is discrete. You get a lot of cells. So if you see on histopathological assessment, on HPE, you get to see a classical presentation of, you can say, cartilage. You get to see, you can say, muscle cells. You get to see, you get to see the epithelial cells. So epithelial cells, you get to see 
the duct reserves the duct reserve cells so lot of cells are there pathology people will be telling you better in this so try to understand that the name pleo comes from the variety of population of cells present in it this is a female predominant tumor this is a female predominant tumor again the most common site for this pleomorphic adenoma most common site for pleomorphic adenoma is the parotid and what in parotid is the most common yeah very good abe uh, uh, abinia yeah very good so bachche what is the most common site answer is in parotid it is the tail of parotid it is the tail of parotid which is the most common site and when we talk about the tail when we talk about the tail what is what is really very important in the tail what is the tail remember tail is the non anatomical word which is referred for a tumor a tumor at the you can say lower pole low uh, lower pole of superior or superficial lobe so superficial lobe lower pole the tumor is the tumor is referred as the tumor in the tail so tail of parotid is the most common site remember parotid tumors are benign pleomorphic adenoma are mostly the common tumor of parotid and that is why we say the mostly the parotid pleomorph parotid tumors are benign in nature let us talk about parotid pleomorphic adenoma so when we talk about parotid when we talk about parotid pleomorphic adenoma pleomorphic adenoma yes parotid pla let us talk about this parotid pla what is important what is important about this let us try to understand when we talk about parotid pleomorphic adenoma this is encapsulated this is encapsulated just so this is encapsulated this is painless this is painless encapsulated firm nodular mass firm nodular mass is that clear or no so firm nodular mass it is painless it is painless encapsulated yeah this is also freely mobile freely mobile except in the upward direction what is this known as so freely mobile except in upward direction except in upward direction what do you mean by this students just try to understand so this is a parotid this is a parotid and under the parotid under the parotid you have a muscle which is known as masseter yeah this is a masseter is that clear masseter now there is a fascia what is this fascia we are talking about the deep cervical fascia deep cervical fascia splits into two leaf, lips so this is the posterior and this one is going to be the anterior and ultimately both of them fuse at the level of zygomatic arch students what is this fascia known as this is known as parotico parotico masseteric fascia parotico masseteric fascia is that clear now remember this is inserted at the level of zygomatic arch so so it is easy to sweep the gland sideways it is easy to bring it down but when we try to take it up when we try to take it up this upward you can say mobility is restricted by this insertion of parotico masseteric fascia which, which is an extension of extension of deep cervical fascia into the zygomatic arch this is like a curtain if you see a curtain this is a curtain imagine this is a curtain yes this is a curtain so you can take your curtain sideways yeah you can take your curtain sideways yes you can you can take you can take it you can bring this curtain down you can bring this curtain down but yes you cannot take it above the site of its attachment why you cannot take it sir because of the fixation so remember due to this reason this is known as curtain sign this is known as a curtain sign what is the significance of curtain sign that yes the restricted upward movement of this parotid mass this is known as this is known as curtain sign now one more interesting fact is that it is encapsulated despite the fact that it is benign despite the fact that it is encapsulated we cannot do enucleation do you know why we cannot do enucleation try to understand because there are multiple invaginations there are multiple invaginations into the fascia 
multiple invagination what are these invaginations known as these invaginations are known as pseudopods is that clear these invaginations are known as pseudopods and remember remember whenever you do enucleation suppose you have done enucleation you will always leave the residues outside and this is going to cause recurrence and remember long standing pleomorphic adenoma long standing pleomorphic adenoma can be a reason behind can be a reason behind what a uh, malignancy so this is the reason this is very 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 important and this is the reason why e nucleation e nucleation is absolutely contraindicated e nucleation is absolutely contraindicated yes let us let us try to figure out other things let us try to figure out other things when we talk about the dumbbell shape both the lobes are involved or dumbbell shaped gland what do you mean by this dumbbell shaped gland yeah so a dumbbell shaped tumor now when you talk about this dumbbell shaped tumor it means both the lobes are involved what do you mean by both the lobes are involved that means deep lobe deep lobe plus superficial lobe both are involved now the first question is how do you check whether the superficial lobe is involved or how do you check whether the deep lobe is involved so whenever you see whenever you see a patient this is the ear pinna so if there is a swelling in this part which has caused upward movement of this ear pinna this is what so swelling below the ear swelling swelling below the ear first is the swelling below ear point number 1 the second important point is the second important point is how do you come to know that deep lobe is also involved the medial shift of the tonsils and the posterior tonsillar pillar so the medial shift towards the uvula you will see that the medial shift of the of the posterior tonsillar pillar posterior tonsillar pillar this helps you to get an idea that deep lobe is also involved so deep lobe involved so we have superficial lobe involvement we have superficial lobe involvement checked as swelling below the ear we have deep lobe involvement seen as a swelling which is shifting the tonsillar pillar towards the midline now i am going to ask what are the features suggestive of malignancy in a parotid mass yes so what are the features what are the features suggestive of what are the features suggestive of malignancy what are the features suggestive of malignancy let us try to understand the features which are suggestive of malignancy point number 1 point number 1 the facial nerve involvement so the facial nerve involvement is very 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 important thing so facial nerve involvement is a very important sign the second is the second is fixity to the surrounding so facial nerve involvement fixity to surrounding remember parotid or benign masses are freely mobile they are freely mobile so involvement of involvement of the local you can say structures means that the tumor has invaded into the local structures that is why we see fixity to the surrounding the third is the third is rapid onset of pain rapid onset rapid onset of pain point number 1 the second is the rapid onset increase in size but the last two features yes they are indicated but not always suggestive the reason is the reason is that you have to understand rapid onset pain and rapid increase in size this is very important because there may be a superimposed mumps parotitis also facial nerve involvement is very important very specific now let us talk about approach approach to a parotid swelling so approach to parotid swelling let us talk about this approach to parotid swelling can you tell me what is the investigation of choice what is the investigation of choice here yeah. how do you just a minute so when we talk about approach to parotid swelling the investigation of choice is 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 fnac fnac is the investigation of choice point number 
the second important thing is why we don't go for true cut students tell me why true cut is not done why true cut is absolutely contraindicated what is the answer the answer is the answer is that first of all there is a risk of facial nerve injury there is a risk of facial nerve injury the second important thing is the second important thing is there is a risk of tumor seeding out and therefore recurrence and the third is the risk of parotid fistulas is that clear so that is why true cut is contraindicated why we are interested to go for fnacs because fnac will tell you two things whether you are dealing with a benign mass whether you are dealing with a benign mass or you are dealing with a malignant mass so benign versus malignant point number 1 this is very 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 important the second thing that you have to understand is if it is benign then what lobe is involved this is again important either it could be a superficial lobe tumor students either it could be a superficial lobe tumor or it could be a deep lobe tumor a deep lobe tumor or you can say it could be a both lobe tumors yes both lobe tumors now when we talk about superficial lobe tumors we have two options for them again we have superficial parotidectomy super facial superficial parotidectomy point number 1 and we have suprafacial suprafacial parotidectomy so superficial parotidectomy and suprafacial parotidectomy let us try to understand what is the difference between two but a superficial parotidectomy is a concept whereby everything above the facial nerve everything above the facial nerve territory you are going to remove the thyroid uh, you can say this tissue the tissue of parotid so suppose this is this is the this is the tumor okay let us see this is the tumor so what you are going to do you are going to remove the you are going to remove the entire superficial lobe above the facial nerve this is what is known as superficial parotidectomy that entire superficial lobe above the nerve is removed exposing all the nerves and its all the branches of the nerves now what is the problem the problem is when you are going to dissect this tissue of the you can say nerve you actually damage the nerve neuropraxia may be seen minimum or you can do a neurectomy also is that clear so someone argued sir i agree to your point that we cannot do enucleation sir but at least we can do a wide local excision or no so students wide local excision wide local excision done for the tumors done for the tumors of what of the lower pole of the superficial lobe this is what is known as suprafacial parotidectomy you don't need to expose the gland you can say the nerve completely even you don't need to interact with the nerve this is what is the difference between suprafacial and superficial so suprafacial students is wide local excision of the lower pole benign tumors of the lower pole benign tumors only so over the time now we have seen that we are shifting or inclining more and more towards the suprafacial if deep lobe or both the lobes are involved students what is the call you go for total conservative parotidectomy total conservative total conservative parotidectomy what do you mean by total conservative parotidectomy it is nerve sparing it is a nerve sparing parotidectomy nerve sparing so total conservative parotidectomy is a nerve sparing parotidectomy now let us talk about the malignant ones let us talk about the malignant ones so if it is a malignancy if it is a malignancy what is that we go for we go for radical parotidectomy radical parotidectomy now what is the concept of radical parotidectomy yes try to understand radical parotidectomy the gland is removed the gland is removed along with that the gland is removed along with that what are the other structures that we remove so the gland along with that what are the other structures that are removed the involved facial nerve very good very good the involved facial nerve what else is removed students the fat around the nerve 
the fascia around the nerve the lymph node around the nerve and along with that along with that the muscles the muscles what are the muscles which are removed masseter masseter is removed buccinator is removed so masseter buccinator they are removed is that clear or no and what is the most important thing after radical parotidectomy after radical parotidectomy all the patients are transferred for radiotherapy remember when we talk about chemotherapy when we talk about chemotherapy this is not for all this is not for salivary gland tumors except except lymphoma so the only indication for chemotherapy is lymphoma in fact if lymphoma happens anywhere in the body you will have to go for you will have to go for this chemotherapy only so this is very 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 simple straightforward concept on the parotid gland and its tumor yeah we have other tumors also we have other tumors also so i'll not discuss all of them one from the malignancy also i'll discuss since this is a this is a sample youtube class if you want to enjoy the complete in depth content yes you have to join an academy and do use the code dr dikshit so i am taking one tumor from the benign and one tumor from the malignancy so when we talk about the malignant tumor malignant tumor i'll teach you adenoid cystic cancer adenoid cystic cancer so adenoid cystic cancer if we talk about this is the second most common malignancy second most common malignancy overall and it is the most common this is the most common salivary gland malignancy salivary gland malignancy of submandibular gland of sublingual gland and minor salivary gland yes this is adenoid cystic and adenoid cystic is also known by one more name which is known as cylindromatous tumor so cylindromatous tumor this is a very big topic i usually take 2 3 hours to complete this so in this class i cannot justify everything so i am teaching only two selected tumors one is pleomorphic and one is adenoid cystic now on hpe on histopathological examination you get to see the snow storm appearance snow storm appearance or you can also say the swiss cheese appearance so swiss cheese appearance swiss cheese appearance or a snow storm appearance is what we see remember where else in salivary glands do you see this snow storm and swiss cheese recurrent childhood parotitis recurrent childhood parotitis you also get to see this so recurrent childhood parotitis and the second place is second is hiv parotitis so hiv parotitis is where we get to see this the next very 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 important thing that we have to understand is very important thing is that what is the hallmark feature of them yeah what is the hallmark feature so hallmark feature for adenoid cystic answer is its unique tendency of invading the nerve so perineural invasion perineural invasion point number 1 the second is the hematogenous spread and that is what makes it very 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 aggressive so what is important point it's a slow growing tumor this is irony it's an aggressive also and slow growing so slow growing tumor but aggressive slow growing aggressive tumor why it is slow growing and aggressive tumor because it has a high tendency of recurrence remember this is the only tumor where metastasis is not a contraindication for surgery because metastasis stays dormant for a very long time is that clear the management is wherever it occurs you have to go for radical resection and yes when we go for radical resection always you have to understand radiotherapy is mandatory radiotherapy is mandatory so with this i finish off a small very small session on salivary gland tumors i have not discussed everything because this is a very big tumor very big uh, you can say chapter do join me on an academy follow me on an academy so that you don't miss the class and to enjoy more special classes you can just download the app and use the code dr dikshit if you are planning to buy plus subscription where we have lot of courses customized for you all remember do not forget to use the code dr dikshit to get some extra discount till then bye, -bye.